Hello everybody, how's it going? Praise the Lord. It's getting a little bit cool out here, but God is still on the move. I want to read from you. This is day three of the 21-day journey into the Holy Ghost. I want to read Genesis 41 verse 38. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. Man's talking about Joseph. He was a uh, full of the Spirit of God from childhood. He was the dreamer. You remember the story? He had a dream about all of his, uh, his brothers and his father bowing down to him and got him in a lot of trouble, man. Dreams, visions, the moving of the Spirit will get you in trouble at times. Some people won't like it as God reveals to you. Of course, Joseph didn't have that humble of a spirit at that time. He kind of had a little bit of ego when he was talking about that. But God was going to lead him on a journey that would cause him to become a humble, mighty, awesome man of God. On this journey along the way, as you go after the Holy Spirit, there is going to be times God is going to humble you, and, and you'll realize it's not you doing this, but it's God doing this. And uh, so when things start happening, miracles, signs, and wonders start happening, your head don't swell up so big it won't fit on your shoulders. Uh, it's a lot of trouble at times. We begin to think it's something that we've done, but it's not something we've done. It's something Jesus did when he shed his blood on the cross, when he ascended into heaven and the Holy Spirit was sent down here as a gift of God to be with us. Uh, Joseph, uh, it's almost a 13-year journey from the time he was about 17 in the Bible till the time he's 30. And he's been in the pit. His brothers put him in a pit. They tried to kill him. Uh, then they sold him into slavery, and then he wound up in Potiphar's house, and there he was a mighty man of God, and everything that he touched, God had favor on it, uh, but uh, Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. He refused to do it. How can I sin against God? How can I sin against my master? What a man of God. Wound up in prison, stayed in there for a few years. But in the midst of prison, he had a, a, a dream interpretation for the butler, the cupbearer, the cook. And in that dream interpretation, he interpreted it right. He's still forgotten about two more years left in the prison. But then comes the day when Pharaoh has had a dream. And the cupbearer says, I think I know a man in prison who might could interpret this dream. And Joseph stands before all the courts of Pharaoh. Man, there's a movie called Joseph you ought to watch. It's awesome to see. When Joseph walks in there as a slave with nothing but his clothes on, and all these people are lined up in Pharaoh's court, and everybody bows down when Pharaoh comes in, but not Joseph. He only bows to one God, and that's the God of heaven and earth, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he interprets Pharaoh's dream. And that's when Pharaoh comes up with this and says, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is in? We, you know, we need more men and women full of the Spirit of God to help. We need help in our Senate, our Congress, our President. We need help in businesses. Man, right now we're in such need. We're in such need for awakening in our nation. And it's only going to come by the Holy Spirit, man. We voted in conservative people, we thought. And there's still, it doesn't seem like the Congress can help us. We got Republicans in Senate, Republicans in the House. We got leaders that don't seem like they can do anything about it. God's getting us to the place where we're going to have to humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, turn toward Him, cry out to God. The Holy Spirit has to come. Awakening has to come to America. It's our time now. If it don't come, there's no other help. The government can't help. Education can't help. Finances and money can't help. We need a move of the Holy Ghost, and it's only coming through the Spirit of God. We need some men whom the Spirit of God is on them so they can make wise decisions. And sometimes this comes in strange ways. When God shows up, strange things happen. Don't become afraid of the manifestations. Don't become afraid when the Holy Spirit starts moving. Don't quench the Holy Spirit, but let Him move and live and have His being. When He moves on the hearts of men, a man like Nebuchadnezzar, have you ever seen, you've seen a lot of manifestations, but you ever seen a man out in the front yard of his house like a cow? His hairs growed out, his nails growed out. He looks like an animal, a beast of the field. 
But God was just humbling him by the Spirit because he came to a time where he said, look at all this I've done. Look at all this nation and this world I'm ruling. And God said, no, it's not you, it's me. After a seven-year period, the next thing Nebuchadnezzar looks up and says, you know what, God, you're God and I'm not God. And God lets him up off there. The Spirit of God moved over him, touched him, brought him out in that field for a time of humility. Man, let the Spirit of God move. He made strange things may happen. It may be a time of humility or whatever else, but let God move. Let Him move in your churches, even if you don't understand it. Man, every time Jesus walked into a church, walked into a synagogue, walked into a city, when He left, people are amazed and perplexed, wondering what in the world just took place. How many times do we walk in our churches and we know what's going to take place? The same, oh, three points, a poem and a prayer, the same songs, and we walk out. And if anything happens in there, we think, oh, I don't know if that's God or not. It's time for something to happen that we wonder, signs and wonders. We begin to wonder what's happening. And it only does that when the Spirit of God moves. Come on, let the Spirit of God move in you again. In the name of Jesus right now, let revival come. Hallelujah. Looking forward to day four. This is Bill Easter signing off in Jesus' name.